I'm meteorologist Bill Murray, and this is your Alabama WX weather briefing for this Sunday. It's March the 23rd, and I hope your brackets are intact and doing well. So far, Auburn doing great. Alabama uh, plays today. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully, both teams will be in the Sweet 16. We know Auburn is, and uh, we'll see uh, about Alabama uh, here today. But we've got a severe weather threat tonight. It's going to be a nice day today, though. Uh, before the storms arrive tonight. Let's look at the uh, upper pattern across North America showing a uh, strong trough uh, there across the upper Midwest, but it's kind of shearing apart. Uh, and as we go through time, it moves through the Great Lakes, uh, sort of closes off into an upper level low, moves into eastern Canada, uh, pushes into New England, and uh, as it does, it sets us up in a northwesterly flow. But in the meantime, uh, it will push uh, a cold front through Alabama, uh, and will bring us a, a chance of uh, strong thunderstorms tonight. Now, I don't think we're going to have widespread severe thunderstorms, but uh, you never know. You could have a surprise with this sort of situation, especially with uh, mid-level lapse rates being pretty high uh, like they are. So we'll watch that. But as we go through time, you see ridging builds over the uh, southern United States. A lot of folks on spring break this week, and uh, that means some pretty nice weather uh, for most everyone, if you're going to the beaches, going to the mountains, or just staying home, it should be uh, a pretty nice week. Uh, I see a little cutoff low there trying to develop along the Texas coast uh, by next weekend. Uh, it looks like uh, we will deal with some rain next weekend, and then uh, uh, another a fairly strong system moves through the east there uh, around Wednesday the 3rd and April the 4th uh, before ridging uh, takes charge over much of the United States. Again, the SPC, this is the day, too, I'm recording this about 9 o'clock uh, on Saturday night. This is the day, too, uh, and I think it'll be pretty consistent with what the day one will be when it comes out tonight uh, after midnight. Uh, a marginal risk, level 1 out of 5, covers a good bit of Alabama. Uh, the I-59 corridor down to I-65 corridor just north of Mobile. Tiny sliver of northwest Alabama. Uh, Lamar, uh, Marion, uh, Franklin, Colbert, and Lauderdale counties in slight risk. That's the level 2 out of 5. Uh, I think these uh, thunderstorms are going to be... Um, even though they're going to look pretty impressive when you see them in a second, they'll get a little upper defluence um, as they come into Alabama. So the rainfall reflectivity may actually increase, but I think the severe threat will actually uh, decrease. We'll kind of take a look at that in a second. Starting off uh, chilly again this morning uh, across the area, uh, 30s uh, up in northeast Alabama, lower to middle 40s across much of north uh, central and north Alabama with uh, middle to upper 40s uh, across the southern part of the state. But things are going to warm quite nicely today. Uh, this is what temperatures should look like by afternoon. 74 to 75 across the Tennessee Valley, uh, somewhere between 77 and 80 degrees uh, across central Alabama with uh, upper 70s uh, across south Alabama. Now, this is the HRRR uh, and a depiction of what the radar should look like and the cloudiness. We're starting off with sunny skies, and that's going to help those temperatures climb uh, through the morning hours. You can see the uh, clouds moving in from the west. They reach the uh, Golden Triangle area of northeast Mississippi here. Uh, by noon, they're moving into west Alabama. They uh, reach the Birmingham area here by uh, 3, 4 o'clock. And uh, you see some showers beginning to reach northwestern Alabama there uh, sometime around 6 p.m. Uh, by 7 p.m., storms are starting to increase over northwestern Tennessee as well as northeastern Mississippi. Uh, some of those working their way into Alabama here by 8 p.m. You see we've got uh, thunderstorms over places like uh, uh, perhaps Fayette and Jasper. Uh, also there from uh, Franklin County uh, up into Lawrence and Limestone counties, perhaps into the Huntsville area, uh, with some pretty decent storms back uh, through the Greenwood and Greenville areas in Mississippi. You see the thunderstorms sort of pick up a little bit as we go through time. This is about 11 p.m. tonight, um, and you see they sort of increase, uh, and they congeal into more of a solid line of thunderstorms, and they push to the southeast. Now, the main threat with these storms is uh, damaging winds. There could be some small hail 
uh, perhaps a few reports of, of hail to severe limits, which is one inch in diameter. Uh, and we can't rule out the chance of a small tornado, but that chance is very small. But here by uh, 4 a.m., the uh, line of storms is uh, arriving in the Montgomery area, uh, pushing through the I-85 corridor uh, there between 5 and 6 a.m., and uh, pushing on out of Alabama with just a few showers in the wiregrass here uh, by 9 a.m. But the clouds uh, begin to decrease. Uh, you see the clearing line reaching the I-59 corridor there around 10 a.m. and uh, the I-85 corridor pretty rapidly uh, by noon tomorrow. Um, but you see uh, some clouds sort of lift back into central Alabama during the afternoon. We'll watch that. And also on that northwesterly flow by the end of the day, uh, five, six, seven o'clock, we could see some uh, clouds working their way uh, back into northwestern Alabama. Now, I do caution that the GFS uh, kind of depicts that uh, the rainfall might stay around a little longer on Monday. We'll have to see how that goes. And that was the earlier thinking. I had taken the rain out of the forecast for Monday uh, for much of north and central Alabama, maybe far southeastern sections, maybe had a few showers still. Now, this is uh, the jet stream level up at about um, 250 millibars or about 35,000 feet. Uh, showing that uh, pattern developing right there. You see these winds increasing over the Ohio and northern Tennessee Valley. And as that happens, I think that's what helps uh, sort of ventilate those thunderstorms tonight and uh, helps their um, uh, reflectivity begin to increase. So, you know, I think they'll be, uh, you know, pretty loud, rumbly, uh, a good bit of lightning and thunder. Um, as we go into the evening hours, as a matter of fact, we can kind of go back and, and uh, take a peek at that. Well, first, let's take a look at what our surface cape will be, uh, you know, as we go through time. Um, and I'm going to go back to the 0Z run because we have that full run and it's the longer run. Um, you see that cape uh, is working its way into Alabama here by 7 p.m. Uh, those cape values, uh, you know, never really get out of control. Uh, five, six, uh, you know, 700 joules per kilogram. Uh, maybe a brief period there in northwest Alabama. Uh, they're approaching 1,500 joules per kilogram. We'll kind of keep an eye on those and just make sure they don't get uh, out of hand. During that same time, the uh, lightning potential is uh, pretty decent, you know, not out of control, anything like that. And, uh, you know, significant tornado parameter. Uh, you know, ones and twos on the uh, ACRR are, are, are not especially troubling. Uh, can't rule out uh, an isolated tornado, uh, but it doesn't uh, spell significant tornado problems for sure. Um, and if we look at the updraft felicity, and I caution you to use this uh, product, uh, you know, with care, uh, maybe, you know, one or two decent thunderstorm tracks uh, across the Tennessee Valley, but I don't think anything major to worry about. Now, model fans, this is the GFS, the 18Z run from early this afternoon on Saturday, um, you know, showing uh, the, what you should be expecting during the late morning hours for your Sunday. Uh, showers uh, across the Ohio Valley there, southern Indiana, Illinois, uh, southwestern Ohio, uh, some showers moving out of northeastern Arkansas into western Tennessee as we go through the afternoon. And as we saw with the HRRR, the showers will be pushing down into northwest Alabama, rain increasing uh, along with thunderstorms over northern Mississippi, the Tennessee Valley region there during the overnight hours, and pushing slowly southeast uh, across our state. Uh, through the overnight. Now, um, during the period between 6 a.m. or really 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. tomorrow, uh, northwestern sections are beginning to clear out. Uh, rain could still be in the I-59 corridor. I may have to go back and put that in the forecast uh, before I publish it here. Uh, but by the early afternoon period, it appears to be uh, generally out of, uh, out of the Birmingham metro area and uh, slowly moving out of uh, south-central Alabama. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of where we'll be Monday afternoon into Monday night. And by Tuesday morning, uh, we should be fairly clear. Now, these are Monday morning lows. We'll be, you know, by, by early Monday morning, early, you know, late tonight, Sunday night, 
we're going to be in the 40s again in the Tennessee Valley uh, with 50s there in the I-59 corridor, uh, really over the rest of the state, maybe a few 60s over um, south central Alabama. And as we get into the day on Monday, uh, it won't be quite as warm. Uh, upper 60s over the Tennessee Valley, lower 70s uh, across uh, north central Alabama with uh, lower to middle 70s over the southern part of the state. Now, by Tuesday, uh, maybe a few showers over southeast Alabama, but um, the rest of the state should be dry. And you see, as we go through the overnight hours, we'll be dry. By when, by Tuesday morning, again, a chilly morning, uh, lower 40s in northeast Alabama. We could see a few 30s in some of those normally colder protected locations. But I think we're fairly done with freezes, at least for Birmingham. Maybe the I-20 quarter might see some frost still in some of those normally colder locations. You see them there kind of showing up in light blue, and you know where you are. Um, you just want to kind of be careful with those. But lower to middle 40s uh, will be fairly common across the rest of the area. By Tuesday afternoon, should be a beautiful day. Uh, lower to middle 70s over the Tennessee Valley, uh, 77 to about 80 degrees over uh, north over central Alabama, with lower 80s over south central Alabama. So it should be a really nice day. That's about where I think uh, temperatures are, are just about perfect. Now, by Wednesday, we see some activity to the west sort of associated with that uh, disturbance that uh, we were kind of tracking. Um, as we go through Wednesday afternoon, you see we're still protected here in Alabama. We get through the night with uh, no rainfall, and by uh, you know Thursday morning, uh, Wednesday night overnight lows look like this. We'll be in the uh, upper 40s over the Tennessee Valley, lower uh, 50s fairly common over uh, central Alabama, and uh, by Wednesday afternoon, uh, not not quite as warm. It's Tuesday. Might see a couple of 60s uh, up around uh, up around Decatur, uh, maybe Coleman, uh, but most folks should make the lower 70s. Uh, we'll probably be in the middle to upper 70s across central Alabama. Just a little shot of reinforcing cooler air uh, moving into the northern third of Alabama. Now by Thursday, you can see uh, rainfall is really beginning to break out to the west of Alabama. And as we go through the afternoon and into the evening hours and the overnight Thursday night, some of those showers work their way into the Tennessee Valley, but uh, most of uh, north central, central, and uh, southern portions of Alabama are protected uh, all the way through Friday. Uh, we see a few showers showing up uh, by Saturday morning. Uh, late Friday night into Saturday morning um, over <laughs> over um, the uh, Tennessee Valley. These are uh, Thursday morning lows right here, uh, 40s again uh, over the northeastern third of the state with 50s uh, to the southwest, uh, pretty comfortable during the day on uh, Thursday with uh, lower 70s in the Tennessee Valley and uh, middle type of 70s over uh, south and south central Alabama. Uh, Friday highs are going to look like this. We'll be back in the lower 80s in a lot of the area. Uh, Friday morning lows, uh, a little more comfortable. Uh, 40s are going to be harder to find, generally limited to northeast Alabama with some lower middle 50s uh, across the central part of the state. We talked about Friday. We go through time into the weekend. Uh, those showers stay over the Tennessee Valley, but by Saturday, um, they start to try to work their way uh, across the rest of the state, I think. This run keeps them out a little longer and uh, really waits until Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. And, um, you know, I have to kind of sample what that sort of looks like. This is uh, late Sunday afternoon. Uh, do we have any CAPE available to those storms at that point? Uh, the GFS thinks we do. So we could see some strong thunderstorms uh, next Sunday afternoon and uh, Sunday night. We'll watch that, but it diminishes pretty quickly. That doesn't look like it's a widespread uh, outbreak in any way. Uh, as we get into the uh, final day of the month on Monday the 31st, that activity dissipates and moves on out, but another system locks in place right behind it uh, by Wednesday the 2nd. It moves through fairly quickly. Let's go back and sample uh, You know how much CAPE would be available to that. Uh, peak heating here on, um, on um, Tuesday, April 1st, um, that would be the day, of course, following the 31st, 
and the uh, Cape values are yeah, pretty decent. So, you know, we may have a couple of rounds of strong thunderstorms there uh, during that period. And then as we go out through time, it looks like uh, toward the end of the period out here in Voodoo Land, it looks like uh, we're fairly dry with maybe a few showers showing up there around the uh, 5th and the 6th. And uh, then we're all the way out to Monday the 7th. And uh, we look dry at that point. Uh, let's take a peek at what uh, temperature anomalies look like uh, by then. And you see we're, you know, uh, fairly middling, cooler over the Tennessee Valley, warmer over the rest of the state uh, as we see uh, as we see that kind of pattern uh, developing. Now, what I want to do real quick uh, before we go any further, I want to take a peek back at some sample soundings uh, for later tonight. And... Um, let me position us like here. This is um, about, this is in that period um, between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. tonight when those thunderstorms are getting into northwest Alabama. And we just want to sample the air mass that's there. Um, the GFS thinks we have no problems at that point. So that's really, really good. And, and going forward in time, even as those storms sort of increase, uh, the reflectivity increases, uh, the probable hazard type is still none. So that's good news. We'll take that. Let's go back in time, maybe one more. The conditions antecedent to the thunderstorms arriving in northwest Alabama, uh, they're generally between the 4 and 7 p.m. period. Uh, we see a marginal severe possible hazard um, with uh, enough cape, uh, you know, around 1,000 joules forecast at that point. A little skinny line of cape. So, you know, a small chance of severe weather, uh, perhaps as those storms first work their way uh, into North Alabama. But, you know, this is the kind of situation with some pretty strong lapse rates um, that we'll, you know, kind of have to watch and just make sure that they don't, um, that they don't surprise us. But I don't think we're going to have anything really substantial uh, to worry about. Now, let's um, talk about temperatures. Um, let me get you some, well, I Somehow, my mediagram, there we go, that's what I want, is showing up. These are temperatures off the National Blender Models, and they show um, kind of a roller coaster. Uh, you know, kind of in and out the first five days, you know, up one day, down the next, but we settle into a generally warmer period toward the end of the period, the last five to six days of this forecast period. Rainfall amounts are going to be best over the Tennessee Valley, about three inches over the next two weeks. They get kind of sparse to the south of that. Looking out through April, the uh, ensembles on both the GFS and the European predict about four inches in the month of April. And that's a little below normal uh, for this time of year in Alabama. We could use some more rain. Well, I don't know if you caught the thousandth show of Weather Brains this week. It was a lot of fun. If you haven't seen it or listened to it, go back on YouTube. It'll be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, because Ben Luna, his group up at Tennessee Valley Weather Channel, uh, produced it for us. We were uh, at Barron Weather in Huntsville, which was a fantastic venue. Many thanks to them for bringing all the panelists together and allowing us to be in one place all at the same time and to enjoy uh, presenting that show to you. A lot of memories as we walk down memory lane, and we introduced a new panelist, John Gordon, the uh, recently retired meteorologist in charge from the National Weather Service in Louisville, good friend of the show, uh, who will be joining us permanently as a panelist going forward. Weather Brains, the weekly netcast that's all about weather. Well, that's your weather video for this Sunday, the 23rd of March. I'll have notes on the blog, a complete update on the forecast coming up at noon, and, uh, of course, have a, a Sunday afternoon update for you. We'll be covering the weather uh, later tonight as it moves into Alabama. Jack Rudden will be watching things till about 11 o'clock. Scott Brown's going to take uh, things till about midnight. I'll be watching through the overnight hours just in case any of those stories storms get out of hand. But until I get the chance to see you next week on Sunday, as I always tell you, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at.